All right, guys, let's get started. This is going to be your appointment setting protocol. You booked your appointment. You did the hard work. You showed up. You made your calls. You called the pawn. You called your lead back. However you did it, you booked an appointment. The client said, yes, let's meet either for a consultation, to show a home, a listing appointment, whatever it might be. What happens next? How do you ensure the highest level of conversion? How do you make sure that appointment is tracked? How do you make sure the notes are in the system? That's what we're going to walk through kind of step by step. Um, and just give you the outline, right? There's going to be different things you need to know, like how to set up a property search and stuff. We're not going to go over how to do that in this appointment, in this training. There's trainings for that, but I'm going to more walk you through the different bullet points. And then you guys can spend some time training on individual stuff if you need to. Uh, but really simple, guys. It's really, really simple. And think to yourself, when you book an appointment with the client, um, a lot of times you may be calling them out of the blue. Maybe they inquired from Zillow or something. But life is happening while you book that appointment, right? You got the rain, you got kids, you got all these different things, work happening. So we need to understand that our job is to make sure that nothing slips through the cracks, right? Because it took a lot of effort just to get that appointment to commit. So the last thing you want to do is book an appointment and then they ghost you, right? So we need to come at it from a mindset of what can I control? What can I do in my power to make sure that I have the highest chance of making sure that client meets with me face to face, right? And it's going to happen, guys. People are going to um, ghost you. People are going to reschedule. It happens, right? It's part of the number. So if you book 10 appointments, you're probably going to have four, at least four that reschedule or ghost you or whatever it might be. Those are the numbers, right? But it's better to have four that reschedule than to have six of them that reschedule, right? So these doing these things is going to help, you know, minimize the people who cancel, reschedule, you know, stuff like that. Um, okay, so let's walk through it, guys. I made a simple sheet, and then I'm going to show you in FirePoint what I do. So these are steps, guys. It's basically eight steps. And some of you senior agents, feel free to chime in if there's anything else you think we should do. But at the very, very minimum, these are the steps. And I'll post this in Slack as well. Number one, you book the appointment immediately. And this is the part where I lose a lot of people, right? Most people don't do this. But remember, if you want something to change, you got to change what you do, right? If you want to take your business to the next level, you got to get out of your comfort zone. You got to do things that most agents aren't willing to do. As soon as you book that appointment, you need to send the video message to that client. Raise your hand if you guys booked appointments this week and sent a video message to your client right after you booked the appointment. <laughs> Zero, right? There's probably not many. Um, it's because sometimes we forget that this is important, right? We think that, oh, I got to set up the calendar and do all that stuff. We don't realize the power of video. Think about it. If you call a complete stranger and they've never seen you before or heard from you before, they only have their interaction based off that first phone call. You're a stranger, right? So how do you build the rapport with that client before you actually meet them? That's where video comes into play because they might've talked to you, you had a great conversation. That's your first interaction. Then you hang up and you send them a video message, right? Or you pick up your phone, something really casual. Hey, John, it was great talking to you. I just wanted to put a quick face to the name. It's Enrique, PRG Real Estate. Uh, just recapping, I look forward to meeting you today at three o'clock to go tour that property or for our Zoom consultation or whatever you're doing. Um, I, I'm going to include my information in this text message here. Feel free to call me, text me if anything comes up, but I'm excited to meet with you and help you guys out. Boom. Just freestyle that. But that's basically what you got to say. You want to bring excitement. You want to show your face, right? You want to recap, you know, real briefly, hey, going to meet at two, going to meet at three, whatever it might be. And then you want to send your contact info in that text message. Because now that's your second interaction with the client, right? You had the first interaction, which was the initial phone call where you booked the appointment. Your second interaction with that client is now your video message. So that client's already talked to you twice or interacted with you twice, right? Then what you're probably going to want to do a step further, and I didn't write this, is before your appointment, you want to send another video message just confirming, hey, I'll see you in an hour, right? Let's say the appointment's tomorrow and you're on your way to the property or you're just letting them, reminding them today's the appointment. Hey, John, it's Enrique again. Just really quick. Uh, looking forward to meeting you today at two. I should have I sent you the link to the Zoom meeting. You should be seeing it. I'm excited to talk to you. See you soon. Real simple. 
How many interactions have you had with that client now? At least three and a half. Three, right? Whether they read it, whether they watched the video, whether they responded with the thumbs up, whether they gave it the little heart on the, you know, on the text message or whatever it might be, but that client has already interacted with you three times. The you know phone call, doing? two videos. You know what I've been doing? I haven't been doing that, but after the call, like, hey, I'm going to send you a link to all my social profiles and all that. And then, like, I've got, like, multiple followers over, like, the last week. But then that gives opportunity to see my page. Yep. See, like, what I'm doing, right? So then that's also more credibility. But That's a whole nother level, bro. That's, that's not even, that's a great idea, right? But remember, your social profile needs to look sharp, right? right. Like, what do you want people to see? Right. So that's why you need to audit that. Um, and make sure that if you do send people to your social media, they're going to be impressed with what they see. They're going to, they, it's going to paint a good picture of you, right? So if you're doing the videos, um, the text message, all that stuff, and then sending them there, and then on your page, you got a ton of useful information, your reviews, all that stuff. Now the client's like, damn, like, who am I meeting with? I'm meeting with this badass realtor, right? So, and this is all before you even met with them on the Zoom or met them at the property. So this is this right there, right here, guys, um, will change your conversion dramatically. If you want to get less people to ghost you, have multiple inter, in, indirect interactions with them before the appointment, right? So think to yourself, have I been doing this? Have I been going deep? Have I been make, doing everything in my control to make sure that people show up to my meeting? These are things that are in your control, right? Any questions on the video stuff? Hopefully I painted the picture of why it's powerful to do the video, right? I remember when I was doing a lot of listings, every time I book a listing appointment, I would send the video after, right? Hey, I'm excited to meet with you. And then I would send links to all my stuff. Here's the links to my review. Check out this property I just recently sold. Here's the website we did for it. I was trying to impress the client before I even showed up. Would all of them click on it? Probably not, right? Would some of them click on it? Would some of them just at least see the video? Oh, shoot, you know, now, Assuming that client might be meeting with other agents, do you think most agents are doing that? So you just like one up, two up, three up, four up your competition. Who are they now going to feel more comfortable with just based off before the appointment? You, right? Because they already have gotten a chance to know you. So when you show up to the appointment, they already have an idea of who you are, right? Okay, so I spent a lot of time on number one, guys, because I think that's probably one of the most powerful things out of this whole list that you can do to take your business to the next level. Number two is going to be just some regular stuff, right? So in FirePoint, you need to update the status and you need to put the tags in FirePoint. Tag it with their, you know, time frame, appointment set, all those different tags. And we're going to do an example right now. Um, but remember, you booked this appointment. You might have gotten it from the pond or it might have came directly to you from the leads. Or you might have entered it yourself into FirePoint if it was like your SOI, but you need to now tag that lead with the appropriate status. It should be a hot status, right? If, if they're looking to transact within the next six months, you need to change that status to hot. And then below that, you're going to put tags with the actual time frame, whether it's one to three months, you know, three to six months, six months plus, whatever it might be, so that you can quickly filter out your leads and know like who, who you got to focus on. Uh, number three, guys, is you got to send the appointment, uh, appointment set can response email to PRG appointments. This is an email template that we've created in FirePoint. It's a real easy one where basically this is where you fill out all the information about the client. It's going to ask you to fill out, you know, the name of the client, who's on the lead, where the lead came from, um, you know, how soon they're looking to buy. These are basically your notes. This is the rundown of the client so that if you ever have to go back into the system, you just pull up that email because it's logged in there. And we got a quick rundown of what's happening with that client, what they're looking to do. And I'll show you guys how to do that. Um, really important, you got to fill in all the info, right? The more info you can fill out, the more notes you can put in FirePoint, the better, right? Because you got to think of scale. If you're working with 50 different leads, 50 hot clients in your database, you're not going to remember every single client. You're going to forget names. Sometimes clients have the same name, right? Same last name, um, especially, you know, Hispanic clients or Indian clients. There's a lot of similarities there. They might just all become blurry, right? So your fire point is where you're going to come back to and you'll be able to quickly see, oh yeah, I remember this client. He's looking for a three bed or he has this certain issue, right? So the notes are extremely important. Uh, after you do that, 
You want to make sure you set the client up on a home search. If it's a buyer, if it's a buyer, you want to immediately start sending them properties. Why do we start sending them properties? Who can guess why we do that? Another, another touch, like stay top of mind. Another touch. It's another way to stay top of mind. Are the properties that you send them going to be necessarily what they end up buying or what they want? Probably not, right? 99% of the time, it's a no, because you may have not met with them yet. You may not know their exact criteria, but it's your first chance to start sending them something via email where it could just remind them of Hervin, 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 right? And then when you meet with them, you're going to refine their search. You'll go in there. You can update the property search and then send them properties that specifically match their criteria. But the home search is really a tool to help you stay top of mind. Is our home search going to be better than Zillow or Redfin's or Realtor.com who spends billions of dollars on their SEO and all that stuff to get drive traffic there? No, it's not even going to compete, right? Like the best home search platforms out there is probably Zillow, Redfin.com uh, and Realtor.com. We're not trying to compete with them, right? So sometimes agents will complain, well, our home search thing is not that good. Right. It doesn't go to a certain area. It doesn't do this or that. Right. But it's like, no, you're missing the point. That's not what our home search is for. They're going to probably search on Zillow. Even if you're sending them properties, even if you're sending them stuff from the MLS, they're still going to go on Zillow. Right. It's just another tool to help keep you top of mind. Right. So it's important you guys reframe your mindset on that. Um, if it's a seller, well, Firepoint also has a home evaluation tool right? Where you can go in there, you punch in their address and it'll send them a home value. And then you could set up a uh, frequency. If you want them to get that monthly, quarterly, whatever it might be, you want to put the seller on that home evaluation thing. It'll immediately send them an estimated home value. Once again, is it going to be accurate? Is it going to compete with you doing an actual CMA and going out to the property? No, it's just one more way for you to stay top of mind. In fact, it's probably better if it's not accurate, because if it's not accurate, then the seller is going to question you. And it's your opportunity to talk to them and say, hey, this is why we need to meet. This is why you need to come out to your house. This is strictly just an estimate based off online sales, right? Because remember, like if everything you sent someone was completely accurate and completely 100% there, like then what do they need you for? Right? It's just ways to get your foot in the door. All right, so I'm going to stop right there. <clears throat> Steps one through four, questions, comments, concerns. You said you sent it to uh, Kate on the Slack? Not yet. It'll be in Slack after, after the training. Okay. Um, okay. So next thing, if your appointment is on Zoom, well, then you're going to want to go set up the Zoom meeting, right? So you're going to log into Zoom, set up a meeting, get yourself a link. Right, because now you're going to send that link over to the client to say, "Hey, this is where we're going to meet." If you have your own uh, your own Zoom, if you're not sharing like the team one, you can create a Zoom room that you just use the same link over and over. You guys see that's what I did. Like for our PRG Zoom, it's the same link over and over, and then I attached the URL from like GoDaddy PRGZoom.com, which takes you to that link. I also have a link to meet with me one on one, which is like Zoom .meet Enrique, which is basically my own Zoom link for my Zoom. I just put a URL to make it easier to remember. But this is ways where like going forward, if you know you meet with a lot of people on Zoom, you're going to want to create your own go-to Zoom link. That's something that where you don't have to create a new thing every single time, right? This is a shortcut. So now when, whenever I'm going to meet with someone, I say, yeah, quick, just jump on your computer, Enrique. boom. It opens and they're in my Zoom, right? So this is now a step for you guys that are doing a lot of Zooms, especially the senior agents and stuff like that. You need to set up your own. Zoom link, create a URL and brand it, right? Meetwiththomas.com. And then what does that show the client, right? When you got something like that. Is that something like we, we do ourselves or is that something like DJ will help us? I know we kind of- DJ can about. help you with it. Okay. Yeah. And I, I think that's important, guys. I mean, I know I know this is a lot of like basic stuff, but we do have some of the senior agents in here. But those are the things to me, a huge takeaway would be that because when you're when you're working with a junior agent, it's like, hey, listen, how much easier is that? Hey, just go in and put this link in there, yeah. set up for this time. It's a lot easier. Right? Yeah. yeah. And again, the junior agent doesn't have to go in there and do all this, just send out, send out that link at that time. Right? Yeah. Uh, okay, so 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 when these guys jump on there and they, there's a canned response that's in there about about uh like met, set, and all that stuff, those tasks are on the right hand side. Those tasks are still correct or not correct? 
Um, I'm going to go over that in a second. Yeah, we'll go over that in a second. Um, so yeah, set up your Zoom. Um, and then even you can create a URL. This is like a step further. If you have a Calendly, right? If you want people to book, I know some of you guys have been putting out your Calendly like on social media. Um, you could set up a URL for that. Like, you know, mine is meetenrique.com. Pay like $1.99 for that on GoDaddy. And then now I just point it to my Calendly. So instead of giving someone this long old Calendly link, they just go meetenrique.com. That has saved me so much time. Anytime I'm trying to book a, uh, a consult with a client or one-on-one uh, -on -one with an agent or an interview with a potential new agent to join our team, hey, just book a time, meetenrique.com. Pulls it up, right? This is got kind of going a little bit deeper, guys, into what you can do with this stuff. Um, okay, so you set up the Zoom meeting. Then you're going to send a client uh, confirmation email. So in FirePoint, there's some templates. And I'll show you guys that in a second where it, they're already kind of pre-written and then you can just go in there and uh, edit them, right? To make them your own. And you can add the uh, Zoom link or if you're not meeting them via Zoom, you're going to put in the address where you're going to meet them at, right? Maybe, maybe it's the first property you're going to. Maybe it's um, here at the office, wherever you're meeting the, the client at. You want to send them a confirmation email because remember, just because you guys do text a lot, right? Doesn't mean the client does text a lot. Right. Some clients are old school. They want an old fashioned phone call. Some clients like are super busy. Just text me. Some clients want you to DM them. Right. They're on social media. That's how you connected with them. Some clients, they just say, hey, email me. I live in my email. Right. So covering all bases where you have sent them a video with the text info. You've also sent them an email. Right. You're making. Remember, we're doing what's in our control to uh, increase the chance that they're going to meet with us. Um. Okay, next thing, guys, is you're going to want to set up a calendar event in the Team PRG shared calendar. So you'll go into your PRG email, you'll click on the calendar, and we have a shared calendar that everybody's on. You're going to create the event in there, right? So if it's a buyer consultation, you'll put buyer consultation, you'll put your name, the client's name, you'll put the time and date, you'll put in the Zoom link if it's a Zoom meeting, right? You'll put in the address of the property if you're meeting them at a property. And what's really important, guys, is that you add the client to that invite, right? You invite them to that meeting. On the right-hand side, you can type in their email and you want to add the client there. You also want to include your senior agent. If there's a senior agent on the deal, if there's a lender on the deal, you want to include the lender on that as well. What does the calendar and the invite do? What's one more thing that it's doing? Remind them, keep them top of mind. Remind them, right? Keep them top of mind. Remember, we're trying to control what we could control, right? Because from here, if you book the appointment today, today's Thursday, and you're not meeting with them to Monday, how many things can come up from now till Monday, especially with the weekend and all that stuff? So is it likely that they may forget? It's likely, right? There's a high probability. But if you send them a calendar invite, they get that message. And then you see step C right here is set up at least two reminders, two notifications, depending on how far the appointment is, right? You'll, you'll want to space those out. If it's tomorrow, I'll probably put one for later today and one for tomorrow morning. I'd rather that client, I'd rather bug the client and they get two different notifications. Hey, reminder, meeting with Enrique, reminder, meeting with Enrique, then to not send them anything. And then they forgot. And then I wasted all that time. I got ready for the appointment and they're a no-show, right? So this is now in your control, right? It's going now deeper with what you're doing. Make sure you set up at least two reminders. If it's further out, think about maybe setting up a third reminder. Nothing wrong with setting them, setting them up reminders. It might just show up in their email. They might just look at it. Okay, remember, and then skip through it, right? <clears throat> okay, last one. Number eight is after you've done all that, and then I'm going to see if there's anything I'm missing here. I, I try to jot down everything I remembered. But the last thing is once you've done all that and you're getting ready for your appointment, now you got to go brainstorm and see how you're going to prepare for your appointment, right? Don't like, uh, especially if you're a newer agent, don't book an appointment at a senior agent and the appointment's like in an hour and you still haven't even talked to the senior agent about the appointment. And you guys both show up on Zoom and like you guys haven't even brainstormed or how are we going to tackle this or what's the angle or what is the client looking to do? you need to take control of that, right? If you want to make sure that you have the highest chance of conversion, you want to be prepared for that appointment, which means you're going to want to get with your, your senior agent, right? Or your lender, whoever it might be. 
um, and brainstorm and prepare for that appointment. What stuff do I need to get ready, right? Um, what were some of the things that were important to that client? When I talk to them, I'm going to want to have those questions answered, right? Or I'm at least going to want to brief the lender, you know, about maybe the program that the client might be interested in or what kind of down payment they're working with. Don't just assume like I sent the email, I included the lender, the lender knows, right? Because the lender is busy. The senior agent might be busy. They may have overlooked it. It may have went into their email and they have 10 appointments today and, oh shit, I forgot to have an appointment with you. And five minutes, right? You don't want that to happen. So remember, whoever books the appointment, you are responsible to make sure all this stuff happens. Not anybody else, not the senior agent. If you book that appointment, you are responsible for taking control of that appointment and making sure you do everything. I don't care if you have to bug the senior agent, you know, flag them down. If they're not responding to you, then you need to come to me and Jason, hey, I booked this appointment. He's not responding to me. You know, I want to be prepared. Like that's it's not snitching or anything like that's saying like, hey, I'm taking this serious, right? Taking, steps, taking responsibility, taking responsibility right? Responsibility for what you can control. And guys, it happens as we get busy. We get busy. A lot of us have multiple deals going on, multiple appointments. We've got our own life going on, stuff like that. It happens, guys. We're human, right? So you just need to make sure you take control of that and do everything in, you know, that you can to, to be prepared for that appointment, mm -hmm. right? Is there anything else... Uh, any of my seniors on here that I'm missing? I'm not understand, but I think like even following up prior to that appointment with the client, right? Because like confirmation, like I know there's some, even when I first started, like I put the appointments and then I'll try confirming like 10 minutes before the appointment, even though we set the reminders and stuff. But I think give them a, call, a phone call the day before and um, confirm. And then maybe the day of, should we take text messages and just confirm again? Yep. Those things do come up, but I would say just following up with that. So let me add that here. Um, send a I would say video message once again right that could be your your follow up or text confirming the appointment at least how many hours before should you confirm the appointment yeah I, I, I like I like talking calling calling yeah you could call these guys should be calling yeah. yeah, I think that the reason why I like the call, guys, is because if they're not going to show, then that's your chance to go ahead and convince them or let them know the value of why they need to meet you. Yeah. Right? Because it's easy for people to cancel on text. Yeah. yeah. Right? Text. Easy on email. But if I talk to you and you're like, well, you know, no, I'm fine. I don't want to meet after all. Right? And at least they didn't start peeling that onion back using the skills we've been working on to figure out why don't, they don't want to meet now. And then you can go to show them value on why they should be. Yeah. Right. And that's the other thing I wanted to kind of touch on is that, again, a lot of us are newer. Some of us that are newer setting appointments, we're setting that appointment and we got to make sure that we're setting it. And that's the next step. It's kind of just adding to this is showing that when they meet with us, they're going to get value from the meeting. They're going to gain value from Rudy that has 20 years experience. They're going to gain value because I have my top buyer's agent, Herbin. He's going to take time out of his day to go in and spend time with you, Dominic, to go ahead and show you how we're going to get you into a process. So you got to sell the appointment guys, with value. That will that will change the conversion rate from just setting to go ahead and we're going to set and we're also going to show up, right? That's a huge thing that we need to make sure that we, we bridge that gap. I know you said 10 minutes for uh, for for the notifications. No, not 10 minutes. Is that, uh, oh, you said something about 10 minutes. No, no, no. Or was it you talked? No, no, that wasn't me. Oh, okay. No. So, so notifications, like... A uh, like few hours before. That's maybe not, we're not talking about that? No, no, no. I didn't... No, not 10 minutes. No, if you set up notifications, yeah, yeah. you want them in a timely manner, right? You want them a few hours in advance. Yeah. So what I added here, step nine, is call the client, right? At least a few hours before to confirm the appointment. So say you come in in the morning and you got that appointment this afternoon, call them in the morning. Hey, John, it's Enrique. Just calling you quickly. We're going to meet later today. Just want to confirm we're still on. I've prepared some information for you, right? Tell them that you've put in work. Right? I've done a lot of work. I've prepared a lot of information for you. I'm excited to meet with you. If John doesn't answer, you leave him a voicemail and you follow up. You immediately hang up and you send a video message or a text confirmation, mm -hmm. right? Remember, we want to meet with the more people we meet with, the more deals we close. That's just the bottom line, right? So, and you're when you're booking a bunch of appointments in a yearly span, you can see what your ratios are, right? I set this many appointments, only 50% of them showed up. 
if I can take that 50% and move it up to a 70% because I'm doing all these steps, I'm going to close a lot more business because I've just gotten in front of more people. It's a contact sport, guys. And these right? are the things you can control, guys. Yeah. These are the things that you can control, and those are the ones you want to mainly focus on, right? Yep. You can control these things. Now, um, this is everything you can control, like Jason is saying, right? You can't control if the client still decides not to show up or if they change their mind or if they're not qualified. But remember, this is a numbers game, right? We're setting a bunch of appointments. We know we have to set at least 16 appointments a month. We might meet with 10 of them. Out of those 10 that we meet with, maybe three or four of them might be solid, solid deals right there. And if you're closing three or four deals a month, you're making a lot of money in this business, right? Now, those are the numbers. Those are the numbers. But we're factoring already in the people that don't show up. We're factoring in that you're not going to convert every single person you meet with just because of whatever, right? So that's why what you could control is if you're booking at least four appointments a week, that's 16 a month, you're making, you're going to make good money just based off the law of averages, right? Um, now, let me quickly walk through. I've explained everything. Now I'm going to quickly just show you so you get a visual on FirePoint. So this is just a test lead, um, you know, for demonstration purposes. Uh, so what I do, right? I book the appointment. Step one was send that video message, right? I already gave you guys a quick little script on how to send that video message. Then I'm going to go in here and update the status. So I'll zoom in a little bit here. I change this to hot because this guy's hot. He wants to buy a house in the next three months. Now I'm adding my tags. So if I click add tag right here, he's one to three months out. I'm gonna add a tag that says appointment set. Um, whatever tags are gonna make you remember more or, or be easier for you to you know, filter through your leads. Maybe he's a investor or maybe he's a hot buyer, whatever it might be but add those tags there. If this was in the pond, I also need to make sure I claim the lead if it's in the pond. That's another thing. I'll have to add that to that list. If it's in the pond, you need to make sure you claim it because once you claim it, it takes it out of the pond and now other agents are calling that same lead, right? So that's an extremely important step that I forgot to mention uh, for those of you that are booking appointments from the pond. So I claim the lead, I hit claim. It's gonna claim it now, it takes it out of the pond. Now I'm the only person on there. What I want to do is I want to add the other team members to the lead, right? So if there's a senior agent that I'm adding, I can put add teammate. Let's say it's, uh, it's Hervin or someone, right? I tag Hervin there. I hit save. If there's a lender, the lender should have some seats in here as well, right? Yeah. You can add the lender as another teammate. Let's say it's uh, Rudy. There's Rudy right there. Boom. I add Rudy. So now what I've done is I've added my senior agent, and I've added the lender who's going to jump on that deal with me, right? So now they, they have access to this lead in FirePoint. Um, the can responses. So if you go to email right here, and then you hit this little drop down, these are all the templates. This little drop down on the right hand side, when you drop that down, it pulls up all the different templates that we have. So there's one that says appointment set can response. So I want to click on that one. And then there's instructions here. Email it to PRG appointments, CC the senior agent, um, add it to the calendar. The main thing right here is delete the client's email. So, because when you send it from here, guys, it's automatically going to populate the client's email. This is a fake email here, but it'll automatically populate the client's email. So you need to make sure you delete it because you don't want to send them our internal email. Yeah, it has happened, guys. So just make sure that's usually the, my, the first thing I do. Yeah, so delete the client's email and then you put PRG appointments there, um, <laughs> right? And then you'll tag, you know, your senior agent, let's say it's Hervin, and then you'll tag your lender, let's say it's Rudy, right? You want to include them on that email so they have all the information. And then you're just going to fill this out, right? Client's name, buyer, seller, who set the appointment, when's the appointment, the source, you know, range. <laughs> just the basic questions, guys, the basic rundown of this client. And then add any notes at the bottom if you need to add some notes to make it easier to remember. I send that off. At the bottom, I hit send. Now, that is our internal tracking of that appointment, right? It sends it to our, our admin department. They can track it. They can log it in our system saying, hey, this is the appointment we booked. And we can go back and, and track how many appointments you booked. Now, the next thing, guys, was I talked about sending the client a confirmation email. So if you go in here, there's some um, confirmation emails right here. So 
uh, buyer consultation confirmation. I got to clean this up a little bit, but new buyer consultation confirmation email. And if you see guys, it's just a really quick, uh, hey, I can't tell you how excited I am to meet with you. I can insert the Zoom link right here, copy and paste it there. It just basically says, hey, when we meet, we're gonna go over a few different things. It puts links to our website, our Zillow profile, and then you can insert any other agent who's gonna be in the appointment with you. And that's basically another way to confirm via email in addition to like the text and the video that you've already sent them. Um, I'm not gonna go through the calendar guys. Um, that's, that's another training on how to do the calendar, but I just wanted to quickly show you in FirePoint, right? The main steps was updating the status and tags, fill out the can response, include your senior agent and your lender, set up the home search, right? The home search tabs right here. There's videos on how to set up a home search. There's the home evaluation, which is right below it, right? So if it's a seller, you wanna set them up with the home evaluation. And that's pretty much it, guys. Let's uh, spend the last one or two minutes on questions. Yeah. Yeah. Very, very quick question. Um, when we're bonding, so pull up the test again. Okay. So like, I noticed this. So I hover over the little pond, little fish pond thing. Mm -hmm. So that's the general lead, general lead pond. Mm -hmm. Now, um, do do it as a, as if you were gonna pond it like yourself let's say this is not here okay so i'll have to claim it first or yeah claim it but see how it how it's a different symbol though pay attention to that and then when you go over there to pond it so if i wanted to pond this lead and move the lead to a pond mm -hmm. then i'd have to pick the pond that i wanted to go in yeah general. so which one do, would go to the general right yeah. generally pond is um, it the same pond though because what's popping up for me is the old pond I don't want to be sending the leads to an old pond where nobody's hitting them. Yeah, no. Um, it's, Let's delete the old pond. There. Yeah, those ponds could be deleted. Um, the general lead pond and the Zillow Flex pond are really the only two ponds. Where, where is when the lead pond that you're talking about? Where is it on the drop down? Because it's the Zillow Flex pond, like the one that you're seeing at right the very bottom, wasn't popping up for me. Yeah, it might not so, be popping up for you because you weren't on there. Yeah, so since I'm an admin, I could see every pond, but the yeah, agents will only be able to see ponds that, that they one. have access to, right? So we'll have to add you to the pond. Well, yeah. No, does that, does that help? Yeah, because okay. yeah, I was finding a bunch of leads last uh, last week. And I was like, oh shit, like what if it's going to like- No, I'll place. sweep it again. I'll sweep it again for you guys. I mean, just to make it easy, you guys just drop it into the, the, the general pond if you want, and then I'll sweep it every 30 days to move it to the, to the appropriate pond. Okay. Uh, but I think that that's one thing I just want to make sure because I know we've talked about it a few times just the lead policy in the sense of making sure that you, you if you want to keep the lead in your system you mark it hot and then you set up the tags so that that's it if it's not marked hot or SOI it'll be swept and put into one of the ponds okay so then again if you claim a lead so even if, let's say Thomas set an appointment from a lead today so immediately Thomas needs to mark that lead hot and tag it as set. So now he knows that lead is hot and it's set. If it's not tagged hot, I'm gonna be sweeping the leads every 30 days. And yeah. those leads will be dropped into the pond, okay? So make sure that we, you know, again, this is something new, so I wanna make sure we kind of repeat ourselves on it. The other thing too is uh, it's, it's important that you guys um, are, again, just making sure we tag it so that when you guys wanna filter it. Yeah. Um, the tags are extremely helpful because when you go back in to filter through your leads, you can filter just by that tag. You can like, if, if you marked all the ones that are within the next three months, you have a whole list of buyers that you've talked to. You can now filter just buyers who are the tag one to three months. Right. And then you can do specific marketing towards those. If you want to send them all like a blast email or only call those ones, right. And set them up on the dialer and just call through that short list. You can do that. Right. Sure. So this is where tags and filters um, tags and statuses are extremely helpful when you're managing a bunch of leads, right? And that's the name of the game, guys. You're going to be managing a bunch of leads, right? As you book more appointments. Remember, if you guys booked seven appointments this week and you're doing, you know, this every single week, it can be really overwhelming, you know, within the next couple of months, if you got 50 appointments you booked in the last two months, three months, yeah, right? So 
you have to be on top of them and you have to you have to think about like if i want to sell hundreds of homes a year right like how would i do it right there needs to be a systematic approach to everything you do you can't do different for this guy different for this guy different for that guy right when you go to mcdonald's they don't make the chicken nuggets different every single time right they don't make the big mac different every single time it's the exact same way right because imagine if they did custom orders every single time they wouldn't be able to sell millions of hamburgers right that's just it's a systematic approach, right? So you have to put systems in your business and just understand that your business will only grow as much as your systems can grow, right? Because you can wing it, right? Like you can, you can still sell houses without doing any of this, but you will always be limited on how far you go because eventually you get burnt out, right? You're only, if you're only relying on your own hustle and not letting the system work for you, you can't sell that many, right? That's why someone like Herman or Thomas or Delirio or some of our top producers in the office, they're, they're really dialing, you know, getting, uh, going deep in their systems, mm -hmm. right? And as they continue to grow and scale, they're going to see that they need to implement other systems so that they can get time back and be more efficient and stuff. Because we only got 24 hours in a day. What are you doing with those 24 hours, right? Um, that's all I got for you guys. Hopefully you guys got some value today. Is there any other questions before we wrap up? Yes. Um, on the test that Robert was saying about the appointment site campaign for like everything that you have to do, there's one that says update productivity tracker. If yeah. you just want to know like what exactly that was. So that that was adding a campaign, appointment set campaign. I don't think we've been doing that right now. No, that was something we old. Campaign. That's the, uh, the the tracker where we had we were using a while to track like the numbers. Yeah. Every time we met somebody, we had to put it in the tracker ourselves. But that can those tasks will only pop up if you add a if you add set, a campaign to set it. Set campaign, right, right. So at first we were using it. Well, I was using it because Herman taught us that like at first like uh, set that campaign that way you have a checklist of like everything yeah. that you have to do. But then that's like one of the last steps. That so we're, yeah, so we're still using that set campaign. But what he's asking is that there's something on there called the productivity one, right? Yeah, that was an old tracker we're that we were using. So we I can go in there. I can clean up that template. Yeah. yeah. I'll clean it up. I'll, what we'll do is we'll probably replace that, that with Herbin's tracker that he's using, right? We start training everyone how to use that that tracker. Yeah, but it was basically like a spreadsheet where you have to go up, oh, up okay. update it, right? Yeah. Yeah. So for now, just disregard that step if you guys are adding those campaigns. Um, and then we'll clean that up going forward. Any other questions, guys? Good job, guys. Good job. Thank you, Kike. All right. Thank, thank you, you, guys. Thanks for showing up. Hopefully you guys learned something. Let's make it happen. We got pizza. Thank Gourmet. you. Bye. Thank you.